Okay, we're here with defensive coordinator Peter Sermon. As always, just let me know in the chat if you have uh, questions, and we'll go ahead and get started with Trace Travers. Go ahead, Trace. Yeah, Coach, uh, off of Saturday's film, what did you guys see that kind of took a step up from past weeks? I thought the guys did a really nice job of executing the plan um, early in the game. You know, the uh, the quarterback ran the ball um, early. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought they they played well together. You saw the, um, you know, the when we rushed the passer effectively, um, you kind of saw the energy of the entire defense um, elevate. And I think that's probably what uh, I took away from it. And that's what on, on Monday, the clips that I showed the, the guys on defense was the excitement of the 11 guys playing together, then even showing uh, the guys on the sidelines. Uh, when good things happened on the field, uh, they were uh, very supportive, and it was great to see everybody involved and engaged in the game. Yeah, and you did it. You rushed the passer without sending more than four too often. Was it, a, I guess, a bit of a relief to see guys winning more of the one -on one-on-one matchups that they maybe hadn't won in weeks past? It was, it was great to see, Trace. Uh, you know, there was quite a bit of a line movement of those four when we were rushing. Um, it was uh, there was quite a bit of variety in, in uh, kind of the rush plan and, and how we were going after some of the protections. Uh, but it was great to see guys finish. Uh, however, that's still a point of emphasis, I feel, as well as, uh, you know, the, the sack numbers were. There's still some things that we need to work on in, in, in terms of the, the integrity of the pocket, where we're allowing the quarterback to escape. There are going to be some situations, you know, and if you bring four or five and they're in six, seven man protection uh, to be able to, you're not going to be able to completely corral the quarterback. There are going to be some, some places that uh, you never like to see the quarterback escape. However, there's going to be some places that uh, you're going to be able to tolerate um, those types of things. And a couple, uh, you know, we had some uh, really nice interior pressures and I think he uh, left the pocket a few times high and outside where we got to, um, we got to keep him in the pocket. He can't, he can't lose, we can't lose the pocket in those situations. And one of them ultimately um, resulted in a holding penalty in the secondary when the quarterback escaped the pocket um, in a situation we were not, um, we were not designing for that to happen. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Kyle, you're muted. Um, are you able to hear me, Coach? Yes, I can. Okay, I think that we're, we got the go-ahead there from, from Kyle. Um, he's having some technical issues. Um, I wonder if you could compare their running back, B.J. Baylor, to Jermar Jefferson, who you've seen in recent years. Are they totally different? Is much the same, or how, how do you look at them? Uh, you know, they're both uh, running the ball very effectively, uh, you know, uh, how Oregon State's designing their run game. Uh, Jamar, I think, was a, a special talent, uh, but, you know, B.J. Baylor and Fenwick and those guys are running the ball uh, exceptionally well. And, uh, you know, I think there's a lot more similarities than, than differences. Both are running uh, well behind their pads, breaking tackles. And, uh, you know, a lot of uh, you, both those guys have the ability of, you know, taking a six yard run, you know, and turning it into an explosive run. And their offensive line is all back from a year ago, I believe. I think their left guard didn't play last game, had an ankle injury, but he's apparently going to be back. How good is that O line? Yeah, I think uh, I think Levin Good was uh, was doubtful or probable last week and didn't uh, end up playing, but uh, we expect him to be back. Um, I think it's, this is the best coached offensive line in our in our conference, and that's a that's a not to slight to to anyone else in the conference. I think it's a compliment to. Uh, Jim and how he coaches them up there. Uh, they do a nice job. They, you know, we talk about they've they've kind of built them up from babies. You know, these guys have been working together, and Jonathan and uh, Brian Lindgren, they've done a really nice job of uh, of developing what they're doing offensively. And uh, you can watch some of the combinations and, and how they block zone and the tracks that they use and, and the techniques that they use. Um, it's it's a, a very very well coached. Um, offensive unit. And if I could ask you a follow-up on a totally different uh, topic, um, your uh, coaching mate, uh, Bill, has got a, uh, a nephew who's a tight end for them. Does he give you any scouting reports on uh, 
Luke Musgrave? No, you know, Bill and I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, it's funny, Bill and I, we don't typically really see each other till Thursday staff meeting. Um, so he's on one end of the building and I'm kind of working the other end. Uh, we pass each other a few times in the lunch line maybe, but uh, uh, you know, we had, uh, Luke was down here um, out uh, when he was a high school, high school of being recruited. And uh, he's a very talented young man, and, and uh, he's doing a really nice job, and, and he's developed very nicely for them. And, and some of the things that he's doing on special teams for them uh, is, is uh, a really good positive in conjunction with what he's doing in the tight end position. Did you see the highlights of him blocking and returning that punt? I did. Has he got as much yeah. athleticism as his, as his uncle? Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. All right, I had another one, so I'll jump right in with it. I, I wanted to ask about their other tight end, uh, Quatoriano, and what he brings to the table. Really effective. Uh, you know, they, both those guys, the T gap. Um, you know, I think he does uh, a really job of, of handling some single blocks, uh, does a nice job on some base outs, some combination blocks. And then uh, both of them are, are very, very effective uh, stretching the field. You'll see them on uh, some different choice routes, some option routes in their uh, big targets. You see a lot of safeties matched up with them, some nickels uh, in certain situations, uh, but they do a nice job with their bodies. I like the route concepts and they, you know, they have obviously some, some concepts and some uh, formations that are designed to get them the ball. And on the run game topic, it looks just from my uneducated eye that they run a lot more zone than gap. How important is it for your linebacker, your inside guys to, kind of fill on some of those plays and not let the line the linemen get to the second level yeah it's uh you know that's been a big point emphasis and that's a lot of uh what we've been talking about this week is you know how you how you marry up uh, the way the rd line plays uh the blocks versus you know uh, with the linebackers alignment rules you know some of the formations that can give us some uh issues in terms of of how we line up and some of the spacing um, the second level of our defensive linebackers, we I, I consider we're the target. So there's on all these on, on all these zone schemes, there's a first level target and then there's a second level target. Um, where we line up, the tempo in which we uh, move with the with the zone schemes, the tempo of the outside zone versus some of the inside zone looks uh, are really going to impact uh, the target for the offensive line. So we're spending uh, a great deal of time on spacing on alignments on you know the the tempo of of the run game and, and the defensive line and linebackers up to the third level of the defense the safeties we all need to be seeing it from uh as much as we can from the same point of view and if i can ask one more about uh nolan their quarterback he's been somewhat involved in the run game seems like a solid passer downfield what stands out about his skill set well, they're asking him to do some things at the line of scrimmage, um, which you'd expect a quarterback to have the capacity, you know, in terms of uh, the mental side of the game. Uh, they put him in several situations that uh, they, you know, against uh, SC, against Utah, they put him in some traditional college football zone read situations, and he's done a nice job of, of pulling the ball. Uh, and then there's not a lot of situations in the drop back pass game that, that he's delivering the ball where it needs to go. Um, you know, he's working on some of the, the boot, you know, some of the, some of the fine pocket movements, uh, he's doing a nice job with that. So when you see, when you see a quarterback up at the line of scrimmage, managing, uh, the offense, uh, you see him with some designed quarterback runs, and then you see him moving the pocket and throwing the ball accurately. You know, it, it it's, uh, you know, kind of the, the full package of, of what they're asking him to do. And, and uh, a big part of playing well on offense is having a quarterback that can do all those things. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Peter, uh, we all know about Cam on the one outside, but uh, how did uh, Braxton and Marquez do last week? And how is that working out, alternating the two of them? Both of them played very well. Uh, BIM has continued to be very disruptive. Uh, a nice pass rush, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago up in Austin, you know, knocked back. Uh, he had that play against the University of Washington. Yeah, that was part of the forced fumble. Um, so BIM is continuing to get more disruptive. Uh, he's a different type of pass rusher than Cam, for instance. Uh, he's, he's sudden. Uh, he has uh, 
not that Cam's not, but he's got that that sudden kind of knockback uh, quality to him. Uh, Brax is is uh, very consistent for us. Brax is doing a really nice job. He had a couple great reps into the boundary. Uh, Colorado ran some outside zone. He had some single blocks on the tight end, and, and he did a very nice job of, of doing what we're asking to do within the concept. So those two guys every week uh, are playing with great effort, great consistency, and it's uh, it's great if we can get them more and more opportunities to get on the field. Thanks. Seems like we're good. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. All right. Bye-bye.